This is uh, the debate on uh, the ethics of eating meat. And it's presented by Peter Tu and by Banana Slicks for Animals, the animal protection group here on campus. Um, we have Bruce Friedrich, who is vice president of policy for people for the ethical treatment of animals, um, the world's largest animal rights organization. Uh, Bruce has been the mastermind behind many of Peter's most outward most uh, attention-grabbing campaigns and has coordinated thousands of protests and actions across the globe. His work to champion animal rights, including his famous streak outside Buckingham Palace, wearing only the words GoVeg.com painted on his chest and back, has made headlines around the world, including numerous stories in the Wall Street Journal, Los Angeles Times, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and USA Today. So welcome, Bruce. And debating Bruce is going to be Michael Chunka. Yeah. Michael's a senior philosophy major, and he's preferential towards post-structuralism. And um, Tom Cox is also going to be debating, and Tom is a junior economics major here at UCSC, and they're both members of UCSC's ethics school team, uh, which is the state champion of California and the ninth place finisher in the national championships. Um, so the, the um, debate is going to go like this. There's going to be a seven minute introduction by Bruce, followed by um, Tom and Michael, then uh, five minute rebuttals for each of them, followed by cross-examination, uh, two minutes each, um, going back and forth twice. Um, then a five minute conclusion from UC Santa Cruz, followed by a five minute conclusion from Bruce Friedrich, and that will all be followed by a question answer period from you, the audience. So let's get started, Bruce. and uh, Michael and Tom, thanking the banana slugs for animals. That has got to be the best animal rights group <laughs> ever. Um, and especially Eric, I want to thank all of you for coming out. Uh, before we get started, um, had, uh, did people hear about this, that uh, Bill Gates bought the Seattle Times this morning? Yeah, he buys it every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are a little slower on the other <laughs> So the resolution, should uh, students at UC Santa Cruz, and you older hangers-on in the audience, um, should you be eating meat? Should you be eating animals? No. The, uh, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> so I just broke Eric's little recorder. Eric, I'm sorry. Grab the other one. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I started grappling with this question, should human beings be eating animals, about 22 years ago when I read a book called Diet for a Small Planet by Francis Moore LePay. And in Diet for a Small Planet by LePay, LePay challenges us to consider the practical implications of our food choices. Um, specifically when we're eating meat, what goes into the meat that we're eating? Um, what are the things that we don't see? And she doesn't look at animal issues, she looks at environmental issues, and she looks at global poverty issues. But really, the vegetarian question challenges all of us to take Socrates seriously. When Socrates says, the unexamined life is not worth living. And for most of us, it was certainly true for me for the first 17 years of my life, I didn't spend any time thinking about where my food came from. You know, I grew up in Minnesota and Oklahoma, um, playing football in Oklahoma, play football in Oklahoma, the food groups really are McDonald's and Dairy Queen. And uh, the idea of not eating meat is uh, akin to the idea of not breathing oxygen. You know, what food is there other than meat? And uh, once I read Diet for a Small Planet and started really thinking about the practical implications of my food choices, um, I realized that what I was doing was not in concert with my basic beliefs, with my fundamental beliefs um, in environmentalism, and opposed to, uh, as much as I can possibly address it, global poverty. So the first reason that I believe there's a categorical moral imperative in favor of vegetarianism 
is the simple environmental lack of consciousness involved in the meat industry. So I weigh about 185 pounds. If I do nothing but lay in bed watching Jerry Springer reruns, I'm going to burn like 2,000 calories a day, except when I get excited. Jerry, Jerry! And then it ticks up just a little bit as I get excited at the television. Um, the same basic uh, physiological relationship is true of animals as well. The vast majority of what we feed to a chicken or a pig or a cow, the vast majority goes into the animal simply leading her or his life. Um, so that it takes about 20 calories into a chicken or a pig or a cow in the form of soy or alfalfa or grain or oats. It takes about 20 calories in to get one calorie back out. Is there anybody in here who would walk to the refrigerator, take 19 plates of pasta and dump them in the trash? None of you. Usually there's like one or two people with a beef that's what's for dinner shirt on or say, yeah, I'd do that. But uh, nobody at UC Santa Cruz, not surprisingly. Uh, I think that's... But uh, the reality is that's the relationship we're entering into. We're paying somebody to waste 20 calories for every calorie that we consume, and that alone um, would hold the uh, lack of ethics of eating meat. That alone would win the resolution for the eating meat is unethical. And once the numbers are crunched, 20 times the fossil fuels, 14 times the water, and 25 times the land, the land to get a calorie from meat as opposed to a calorie from vegetable products. You take that with the fact that, in fact, it's causing people to starve to death, um, our addiction to meat. So a few years ago, the UN Special Envoy on Food called it a human rights crime that 100 million tons of corn and grain is being fed, to, is being turned into biofuels well, roughly a billion people, 987 million, are living in nutritional deficit. You know, 987 million in nutritional deficit. That's a euphemism. They're starving to death. And at the same time, 100 million ton metric tons of grain and corn is going into biofuels. Human rights crime. You know, fair enough. It's driven up the price of food by 70% for people who are starving to death. It's literally causing starvation. Yet the same UN report found that 760 million metric tons are being fed to chickens and pigs and other farmed animals, which doesn't even include the 95% of the global soy crop of about 220 million metric tons that is also fed to farmed animals. It is literally the case that our choice to eat animals, in addition to being so vastly inefficient, is driving up the price of food so that people in the impoverished countries starve to death. Greenpeace unveiled this banner, KFC Amazon Criminal in the Amazon Rainforest, to focus attention on the fact that the Amazon was being chopped down to grow soy to feed the farmed animals. 95% of soy is, in fact, fed to farmed animals. So if you care about the global poor, moral imperative for vegetarianism. If you care about the environment, either one of them, moral imperative for vegetarianism. Finally, I want to talk about animal welfare. If you are opposed to cruelty to animals, the only morally acceptable choice is a vegetarian diet. I want to play about one minute of this video that Alec Baldwin narrated for us. It's called Meet Your Meat. What you are about to see is beyond your worst nightmares. But for animals raised on modern intensive production farms and killed in slaughterhouses, it is cold, inescapable reality. Once you see for yourself the routine cruelty involved in raising animals for food, you'll understand why millions of compassionate people have decided to leave meat off their plates for good. So, with seven minutes, I don't have time to show you more of that video, but what I will say is that uh, I went vegan originally 22 years ago, purely, on the envi purely for environmental and global poverty reasons, then, but for six years before I joined PETA, I was running a soup kitchen, uh, the largest soup kitchen in Washington, D.C., as well as a shelter for families. And while I was there, I came across the basic animal welfare ethical paradigm, which is what you get by eating meat is a momentary palate preference. You get the taste of flesh that lasts, you know, 10 minutes to an hour, however long it lasts. What you're giving up from an animal welfare standpoint is cruelty to animals that would warrant felony cruelty charges if these were dogs or cats, if these were animals who had any legal protection at all. So how many people in this room would like to spend an afternoon slicing animals' throats open? None of you. So where is the, okay, one. So where is the uh, basic moral consistency in paying other people? You know, most of us don't even want to think about it, right? We don't want to see the video. We don't want to think about it. We don't want to do it. So the challenge is, where is the moral consistency? Where is the integrity in paying other people to do things to animals that not only would you not do it, not only do you not want to see it, but most of us don't want to even spend any time thinking about it. 